okay speed control of dc motor we discussed in the last class only the field flux control we discussed in the last class for series motor i think we discussed a problem also Am I audible? Yes, sir. So, diverter control, tap field. We have discussed the terminal voltage control. No, this also we discussed in the last class. The field flux control of a DC series motor. And under that, we learned about the diverter control, tapped field control, series parallel control. So these three are the techniques under the field flux control of DC series motor. Now then come to DC, sorry, terminal voltage control of DC motors. So under that, we saw uh, the ward Leonard technique and another is uh, by using the solid state converters like phase control rectifier and dc dc chopper so this we uh, discussed in the last class so today we'll start the testing part tests of uh, testing of dc machines or dc motors different types of tests are there but before that we should uh, know about the losses and efficiency because from the test generally we uh, determine different losses and efficiency of the machine okay so losses i think i have discussed uh, yes before you start i just wanted to ask something uh, how will you evaluate our marks by giving assignment or something else? And if it is assignment, then when will you provide that assignment and how much time will you look no, for submission of solutions? For your uh, second year, it not has been decided the date. Okay, so mode can be uh, decided later that mode can be decided by concerned teacher. I can uh, take the test by uh, as giving the assignment or by giving or one part I can take through the Google uh, form. Uh, just uh, the mode I took the test in the basic electrical engineering. Okay, so actually there are two parts and uh, within the 50 marks. Uh, the one will be kept for the internal assessment. That is uh, 15 marks. Another uh, 35 marks is basically the equivalent to your semester exam okay and as i am taking only one part of this electrical machine one so i will take a 30 a 35 plus 15 only okay now that 15 i can take either by assign assignment or by uh, making the google form okay that 15 marks uh, that's 15 marks mm. and for 35 marks 35 marks you have to uh, assignment best evaluation of oh. set of question i will give you you have to return back within a definite time okay Any yes. other query? No, sir. Total. Total 50 marks a question. Where? Five zero. Hmm. 35 was a semester, 15 was internal. Semester thing, no? You go well and both the way. semester example, if you chena. Semester equivalent. 
মানে ওই সেমিস্টার एग्जाम সেটারই একটা আলাদা ফর্ম স্যার তাহলে বাকি 50 টা কি এডি স্যার নেবেন আমাদের ট্রান্সফরমার কে পড়ান সিঙ্গেল ফেজ ট্রান্সফরমার এডি স্যার এডি স্যার নেবেন এডি স্যার মানে অরবিন্দ স্যার আর কি হ্যাঁ স্যার বাকি 50 টা এডি স্যার নেবেন আচ্ছা স্যার ওকে আর আপনার কিছু বলার আছে ओके, सो एज आई टोल्ड यू दैट बिफोर गोइंग इन टू दिस टेस्टिंग पार्ट वी शुड नो व्हाट इज द हाउ द एफिशिएंसी इज डिटरमिन फॉर डीसी मशीन ओके एंड व्हाट आर द डिफरेंट लॉसेस द लॉसेस आई डिस्कस्ड इन सम अर्लियर क्लासेस एस आई कैन रिमेंबर but the efficiency i define what is the efficiency so total losses if we can find out the total losses efficiency of dc machine okay so total losses will be different for generator or motor if i take generator that will be suppose wg equals to w0 that is the no load losses and vt into if which is called the field loss and i square ra which is called the armature copper loss so this part is called the no load loss so you can also write down this w0 is no load loss vt if field loss and i square ra Called the armature armature copper loss. Okay. <clears throat> Now, if this is the losses, then how we can find out the efficiency? efficiency of dc generator what will be that all of if i know the losses and if i know the output how can i find out this so output output by output plus losses output by input is called the clear so so this is efficiency in general term and as he told that within the input you have the losses output plus losses okay clear now uh, you can also find out like this the numerator input minus losses this is another way to define it isn't it both the way you can define the efficiency so if that is you are defining like this so this will be losses and input means output plus losses and one minus wg plus wg plus your losses
Okay, so WG is the losses and VTIL is the output. Clear? Have you understood this part? If you don't understand, you can ask me right now. So this is how the efficiency of a generator we determine. This is for generator and motor for motor, it will be different. Hmm. So different way uh, in the different the motor efficiency. Okay. Now, uh, if we consider the loss, uh, there are, as I have shown here, the no load loss, armature copper loss, and field loss. There are three, three different losses. Okay. Now, as you can see, which losses are constant with respect to the load current? Oh. Anybody can tell me? Here we have encountered different losses. So, which losses are constant? That will uh, it's a no load loss, but the field loss also constant, isn't it? If we take the field loss, such hunt field hole to constant, jodi series field high the hole ki constant. Okay, so for this, uh, this particular uh, analysis, we have taken the shunt field only, so therefore, we have taken the different field current. I Okay. Okay, sir. And if we take the series motor, then what we okay, do? Sir. We, we take the total resistance together. The armature resistance plus uh, the field resistance because those values are very small and equivalent. So therefore, we take together armature resistance and field resistance in case of DC series motor. But this part we are discussing for Shan. Or a separately excited, also you can say. Mm. Okay, so here what mm. are the a constant? So that will be a constant, isn't it? And the variable loss, sir. Sir, sir, policy day constant loss at Ketre winding when a windage by friction loss time consider Corbona Corbuto and Corbona will in it. That all comes under this no load loss. Here you have all the. Okay, okay, so no load. So okay, here okay, sir. All okay, we have encountered in this W0. So that is a constant part of the loss. But here. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, so here we haven't considered one more loss. That is the brush loss. Brush loss means what? So that means the losses will be will have uh, different parts like P. Okay, P, Q, and R. Now this P is a constant loss, as I have told you that this is a constant loss. And what is this part? This part is a copper loss, armature copper loss. So one part is constant loss, another part is copper loss. That also we have shown here. So one part which is constant loss, another part is this. Okay, so what is the what is this term which is I have written at the middle? So this basically comes. The, for the brush contract drop. Now the brush contract drop, brush contact drop. So do you know what is the voltage drop at the brush end? Or the, the uh, between the, uh, the brush junction? How much voltage? Two volt. 
So two volt brush drop or two brushes, two volt voltage drop generally we get. Okay, so that means when, so this voltage is almost fixed. If we take VB, that is almost fixed, like two or uh, whatever there uh, for a particular machine that is fixed. That two volt will not change with current or load. The voltage is constant. Then the loss, if we want to calculate, then it will be two into IA whenever there will be current to it. So the voltage into current, that will be the power loss. That is called the brush contact loss. Okay, so that is this term, the brush contact loss. Clear? So, uh, so if I now, if I find, try to find out the efficiency, so the efficiency will be one minus the losses divided by input. So from this expression, one minus losses by input. Okay. Clear. Now, if I want to find out the maximum efficiency, hmm, what will be that with respect to the load current if we want to find out? If we want to find out the maximum value of efficiency. Maximum efficiency eta max. If we want to find out what we have to do, we have to take the derivative, isn't it? So we have to take the derivative that is d eta dia close to zero. So from this condition, we can get the maximum efficiency condition for DC machine. Okay. So find out that at what condition we will get the maximum efficiency. So remember this expression we are basically drawing for the generator. So I'm waiting for your answer. At what value of load or load current rather, I will get the maximum efficiency. What is that condition? So uh, the R into IES square, that should be equals to P. Mm -hmm. No, I want that at what value of IA? So that I want. Yes, sir. So IA will be root over P by R. Root P by R. Yeah, root P by R. Root P by R. Yeah. So at this value, IA equals to P by R will get the maximum efficiency. Okay. And if we plot the efficiency versus the load, load means we always, load means we refer to the load current only. So the load current versus efficiency so it will be a curve like this. And here we'll get this value. Which value? 
जेनरेटर विल गिव यू द मैक्सिम एफिशिय depends on a few parameters what are the parameters parameters is number 1 the no load loss not only no load loss there are some field loss are also there because p is basically not not only the no load loss some part of the fixed uh, uh, field loss is also there so that means p is called the fixed loss and r r is the That is basically the resistance, armature resistance, isn't it? That means you you have to you can change this uh, root over p by r or the uh, or the value of armature current at which the maximum efficiency uh, you will get from the machine. That you have to do during the design itself. Once the machine has been manufactured. you cannot change the value of armature resistance or this fixed loss value okay now uh, uh, for a good design generally this eta is kept or this maximum value of eta uh, at what value of full load current it is kept at is around 75 to 80% 80% okay so that means this value hmm this value also you can write eta max i a eta max so this value you can write 75 to 80% of the i full load the i full load what is i full load i full load is a value of current which you can determine directly from the nameplate values nameplate means suppose in a dc machine uh, they are suppose the machine is 2 kva 2 kilowatt if it is a generator then it will be kva 2 kva and suppose the uh, uh, the voltage is 110 volt okay so that is given in the nameplate then what will be the i full load so that means the rated current and full load current is basically same so what is the i full load current value that is 2000 divided by 110 for dc machine kva and kilowatt is similar so This will be the what will be the value? Find out. Hmm. Okay. Eighteen point one eight. Okay. So eighteen point two. Now that means uh, if I want. that at what value i should get the eta max that will be should come around as per the design it should be such that the value of i a eta max should be thirteen point six five two Fourteen point six five. Fourteen point five six. Yes. So between these two value, if we have, then it's a good design. Okay. So generally, by design, the value of armature current at which the machine should give the maximum efficiency should lie between the. Seventy-five percent to eighty percent of the full load current value. Okay. Now, uh, 
so this is uh, this uh, we have uh, determined for the maximum efficiency so there is another term for a machine which are because it is uh, basically the output uh, uh, output dependent so if i want to find out the condition for maximum output that would not get the same condition this particular condition which which we obtain here this is for maximum efficiency of the machine, not for maximum output of the machine okay so at what condition we should get the maximum output of the machine so that we have to determine so if i find out what is the output here output is input minus so this is this was the input minus the losses the losses is p plus qy plus r i square okay now that means to get p out maximum what we have to do we have to we have to make this different differentiation zero so now you find out the condition at which value we should get the maximum value सर आई एक्वल्स टू भीटी बाई आई एक्वल्स टू व्हाट इज दैट भीटी बाई टू आरे सॉरी आई हैव टू मेंशन भीटी बाई टू आरे टू इन टू कैपिटल आर कैपिटल आर वही तो स्मॉल नेक्स्ट बेबन दैट इज आरे आरे आंटी तो Gt by two r. Okay. So what about this q term? Q term minus what term? Gt minus q. हाँ ऐसे तो देखो आमित तो जाने ना तुम तो बंगला का बहुत छोटे रिवीडियो. Gt minus q divided by two r. Gt minus q isn't it? ट so then it it can come with the value that shown to be told so that is it is by 2r or 2r rather r basically the armature resistance okay so have you understood how uh, we can get the so this is the condition where we will get the the uh, maximum out now what will be the maximum output then if this is the value then what will be the maximum output then can't we find out this am i clear what i am asking so i want po max p output max what is this value let's find out
Any problem? Vt square minus uh, 5, 4, R minus 3, minus Q, Vt, 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 Minus Q, Vt, you so, so q is not there q have you for this condition I, I want to put this condition where you have assumed q to zero i yes, am asking you to find out for this condition where the q you have taken zero the approximated one then minus p will be only minus p only minus p it will, be, it will be there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, so that means how much, so how much losses are there in the machine? That is, a, if I now uh, want to calculate the efficiency at this condition, what will be the efficiency? Let me go back to that efficiency part. So P plus Okay, output by input. Directly I can put this output by input. So the output is Vt square by 4R minus P. And what is the input? So I won't put in terms of IA because IA term will be gonna so, key away? Vt square by 2R. How? Sir, Vt into IA. Vt into IA. Okay, so IA you are putting. Tigger. Vt by? Vt square by? 2R. Okay. So, that means if I neglect the, the minus term, what will be this? So P by a term is there, P by Vt square. So if we neglect or if we put it to zero, so what will be this efficiency? Half. Half or 50%. So are you getting? So this is the same thing which we get for any maximum power transfer theorem where the part of the power is dissipated in the or not the part 50 percent of the power is dissipated across the internal imp impedance only internal resistance only Okay, so that means huge armature voltage drop and huge power loss will be there in the machine. Hmm? And efficiency will be quite poor in this maximum output condition. Are you getting? So that means maximum output we should not desire for. Always, we should go for the maximum efficiency. Do you know what is maximum power transfer theorem? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, in the maximum power transfer theorem, how much loss uh, generally we uh, get? Or, sorry, how much efficiency we get? 
Do you know that? 50%. 50%. So here also you just see, here you'll get the same thing. You'll get in the 50% efficiency at the maximum output condition. Hmm. So it is not a desirable condition. Okay. Any, any uh, doubt? Okay. Okay, can you tell me uh, just uh, as I have already asked you, so what is the maximum power transfer theorem? Just once you just remind all. Sir, network is equivalent. Uh... <coughs> Impedance of a jetta loaded impedance set a complex conjugate high. Mane jetta reactive part set a negative of Maduto sign opposite high, are jetta resistive part set a value equal. Okay. Statement I remember the name of you, so, circuit which has some internal impedance that is J I and there is a load across which we are measuring this output and all. If that is a load resistance, and if we have a voltage source here. AC or DC, whatever. Okay, so that means in that condition, the maximum power in the maximum uh, output power will get when ZL will be equals to the ZI conjugate. This is the thing you want to mention. Yes, sir. Okay, so that means if this is the case, so that means JDL you can write R plus J XL and JDI you can write R plus JX. And as we have mentioned the conjugate, so therefore it will be the negative. And if we equate the real and imaginary term both side. So we'll get R equals to Ri and XL equals to minus Xi. Am I right? All you agree this? Yes, sir. Not you, I'm asking all. Do you agree? Yes, sir, yes. Okay, now I'm asking yes, one thing that suppose I have a resistance. All right, RL rather. What would be the condition then? Sir, RL should be equals to mod of Jedi magnitude of Jedi how you how we are telling from these expressions no sir uh, we have to uh, take another case here because if the uh, in this expression while deriving this expression we have assumed that the RL and XL both are very independently but if we consider only one single resistance then the condition will be that uh, so only the magnitude of the load resistance can be varied by the theorem, isn't it? Yes, sir. We have to take another case. The maximum power transfer yeah. theorem only you have this J D equals to J D conjugate for impedance uh, considering the impedance. But if you don't have impedance, only resistance in one side, another having the impedance, then you have to take the mod value. Okay, so that is a special case you can remember as a special case.
पावर this condition r l equals to root over of r i square plus x i the reverse is also correct that means if we have both reactants and resistance in the load part and the resistance only resistance in the internal impedance part then also we can find out similar expression clear okay now we can start our discussion on testing on dc machine i think efficiency losses is a little bit clear to you now and what is output what is efficiency what are the losses how to uh, account those losses so that you have understood now how to test the uh, the the efficiency of or how to measure the efficiency experimentally for a dc machine so there are two methods one is direct method because in this method actually if we think suppose for a dc motor now if we actually want to calculate or want to measure the efficiency what should we do suppose take the case of a dc motor now if we actually or accurately want to measure the value of efficiency how can we do that any idea because efficiency is basically the general expression is the output by input rather output power by input power okay now for dc motor what is the output power you just think for if the case is for dc motor what will be the output power in which form we will get the power omega into t mechanical that is the mechanical power so the output power will get in terms of mechanical form isn't it now electrical part is again electric okay so the input power is again electrical now how to measure this mechanical power as he told that output is torque into omega okay torque into omega but how will measure the torque how will measure the omega as the electrical part it is very easy by voltmeter you can measure the terminal voltage by ammeter you can measure the current ammeter and voltmeter these are sufficient as it is a dc motor you don't have to even measure the power factor so only the voltmeter ammeter reading will be sufficient to measure the input power but how to measure the output power okay let us take the omega r that we can measure easily by some tachometer okay so we can we have seen the tacho which measures the speed but how to measure the torque set torque sensor okay so torque sensors are not there but torque transducers are there but 
they are very very costly okay sir so simple cot of transducer cost uh, around 2 lakhs okay where the, the voltmeter ammeter is uh, you can arrange within 500 or 1000 rupees tachometer you can arrange by 2000 rupees but the top transducer cost around lakhs so don't think of that so therefore for this type of thing what we do we use a brake test that is will not allow the machine to rotate will break the machine will block the machine okay so how the arrangement is uh, i don't have the figure but you just try to understand the arrangement suppose this is the side view of the machine these are the shaft okay and suppose these are the bearings so here what you have connected you have connected a pulley you have connected a pulley and here you have the belt here you have the belt okay the belt is kept here soja line hocche na dekhe jacche anyway try to understand and this belt you have to uh you have to connect to some uh, uh to some arrangement at the top so suppose here you have some arrangement so i will draw another view then you will understand this so if i if i take the front view it will be like this this is the pulley okay so this is the sub diameter and this is the pulley and these are the belts okay now here we have two spring balance like this let us say s1 and s2 and this is connected to some hinge help them okay is that clear so two spring balances are there hmm. and the belt is connected with a uh, with a another uh, fixed bar hmm. with the help of some uh, tightening arrangement so here we have some screw which you can tight okay is that clear now if we want to find out the uh, output of the motor how we can get that actually this s1 and s2 they will measure the 
kilograms, isn't it? So how much load is there? It will measure the S1 and S2. But they will measure the opposite. That means if we want to actually find out how much uh, how much uh, pressure is there, so we have to subtract this S1, the S2 from S1. Okay, and that into 9.81, that is the G value. Okay, so that will be the total force. Am I right? You see, I, I am indirectly measuring the torque, not directly. I am indirectly measuring the torque because as we don't have the torque transducer, so we have to measure the torque somehow. Okay, so you can say by the spring balance S1 and S2, we are basically measuring the tensions of the belt and the net tension will get by subtracting S2 from S1. And that is into the G, G value 9.81, we can get the total force exerted on the pulley. Okay. Now what will be the torque? To get the torque, we should know what is the radius. Suppose that is R. Now, what will be the torque? Torque is force into the distance, and that is what is the value? If that is the R. Whether it is 2R. Anybody? Two R. Apple or two R. We are going to show two R. to X direction. It is force like this. Toto. That means when I am subtracting this S one minus S two, that means I am considering only uh, one way force. Isn't it? So they have to eat the other one. That means I already have subtracted. That means already I am agreeing that it is the force in one place. So therefore, uh, it will be calculated with respect to the hinge point of the reference. <laughs> 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 Eva Eva Tigach Machana Pro offer. Data Buzavar Chokano R Huluta. Why not it is two R or D? Actually, in my internet connection is unstable, it is showing. So, therefore, maybe the voice is getting. Okay, now the torque is F into R. Okay. So if that is the torque, or it is called the electromagnetic torque, so that into omega will be the motor output. So this is how you can find out the motor output in terms of mechanical power. And thereby, the efficiency you can calculate it. You can calculate it by
so this is how okay clear so this method of finding out the efficiency is called the bread test and these stuffs are not the the direct method of testing of dc machine but in this process only we can find out the efficiency of dc motor not for generator if we want to find out the efficiency for generator we have to find out indirectly sir voice to come out sir no i just told you that by this process which is called the break test or direct method of testing we can find out the efficiency of a dc motor also okay we can find out the efficiency of a dc motor only hmm and here a huge heat is generated in the pulley itself so that is at disadvantage of this machine of this uh, testing method due to this friction in the belt which is connected with the pulley there is huge frictional loss and heat generated okay so generally uh, we don't go for this test the tests which we obtained for indirect tests okay so there are two indirect tests one is called the spin burn test another is called the hopkinson test swin burn test and hopkinson test okay so in swin burn test what we do is basically find out the efficiency at no load condition hmm. first if we try to find out the efficiency at loaded condition also in this in this method then that will be erroneous we can predict but that will be erroneous because this test is performed at no load condition only okay so let me first draw the arrangement then we'll discuss So these are the armature terminals. Okay, and field. Some rheostat is there. This is the field coil. okay so this is the arrangement okay now as i already mentioned that this test is performed at at, at its no load condition no load means if we take as a motor then there is no external load is connected with the shaft of the motor okay 
and motor is, motor is just freely running. So that is considered as a no load case for a motor. And if it is a generator, then there is no electrical load is connected with the armature of the generator. So that is taken as a no load case or a generator. Okay, so this test can be performed for motor as well as for generator. Okay, now uh, suppose the motor is running at no load, then what will be the current which will flow through it? That is some no load current, take I0. I0 is the no load current which is flowing through the armature. And as the you have given the rated voltage, so VT is the full load VT only. Not only that, if you have given a rated voltage, the field current also will be rated. So both you will get the rated field current and rated voltage. But the armature current will be quite less because the armature is not connected with any load in case of DC generator or in case of motor also, you have not connected any mechanical load to the motor, motor is running freely. So the armature current will be quite less, quite low, okay? Now, if I want to find out the no load loss, so what will be the that? So how we can find out the no load loss? Any idea? Sir, input uh, to the armature theke jodi mane ohmic loss ta ke subtract kora jay. Ta hole hi to paaw jabe. Na puro dae no load loss. This VT into I zero. This total loss is the no load loss. So this is the no load loss. No load armature loss. Because here we are Just not we are not giving any power to anybody, any load. So whatever the power armature is Sir, taking, uh, no load bolte. Machine is running, machine is running and no load only. No load Sir, is done. So if we don't consider, Achis. if we don't take the field loss, if we take only the armature loss, so VT into I0 is the total no load armature loss. Isn't it? If we don't take the loss, we don't have to take the device or take the device or take the mechanical load. Motor is just running freely and generator is also running uh, open circuit. Open circuit means no armature current. Okay, so armature current J2 current that is for giving the field excitation arm in case of generator. Sir, आगे माने इलागे चिटा बोलो चिरे जो no load loss माने basically वही जो windage loss, bearing loss और core loss टा उखना आशा था। तार माने इखाने तो एक टा small जो ओहो मिक्लोस टा होच्छे आने में चले। शेटा के वो no load loss से मुद्दी थोड़ा होच्छे। इखाने no load को था टा माने टा टोन रोको। सब सब तार मुद्दी आच्छे। rotational loss टा वेर मुद्दी आच्छे। तुम्हार उखाने जेटा अमरा माने जेटा generally अमरा neglect क no load loss air armature current to cook com it case of no load the i0 hmm. Hmm, by this ifl hmm. is quite less because much i0 is quite low compared to the full load current hmm. okay and if we go for this i0 square yes. r, so that is very, very low compared to the actual copper loss value. The actual copper loss value is this. So this is the actual copper loss of the machine. So this value is quite low compared to this actual copper loss value. But in case of no load, this value should be there. If we want to find out accurately, 
Okay. So suppose this is your no load loss. Mm -hmm. Then, or rather, we can also use P zero. Okay. So the P zero is the no load loss. If I want to find out the only the rotational losses part, then we have to subtract this. Then we'll get the rotational loss, which is there in no load as well as load. A rotational loss I watch windage plus bearing loss. Clear. This rotation core loss. loss. Okay. Actually, core loss we neglect for this type of case. But if we uh, consider the core loss, then also it will come under this P0 minus I square R A. I zero square R A. That also will be there. Rotational plus core loss, then you have to consider. Hmm? If core loss time we consider kori, tar mod, tar, sheta er modhi thak. Behi rotational loss er modhi, sheta jana roche, roche nita. Thik hai, sheta jai hog, jat, mane jai hog, sheta kintu I zero independent. Sorry, I current independent. Mane current very shal hoa shate shate. A part ta change hobe na. Maybe it's a rotational loss or rotational loss plus core loss. What it may be, that will be fixed. That will not vary with armature current. Okay. And here also you have another current that is a field current and that is fixed because the voltage is fixed. So that field current will give rise to field loss. So that is called the Shan field loss. That will be equals to Vt into If. Clear? Bajagata. Now, if I want to find out the efficiency, then what will be the efficiency? 1 minus losses by input. So this is the general expression of efficiency. Now, what are the losses here? What are the losses here? So rotational loss, shunt field loss, then copper loss, the full load condition. Okay. In full load condition, what will be the losses? The rotational loss will be there, isn't it? That is C. C yes, will sir. Be hmm. What else? Shunt field loss. Shunt field loss will be there. What else? Full Major load copper loss will be there. Not full load. For any load. Yes. Sir. Huh. So this efficiency oh, is for load, any load. load. For any load. Any load IA. For any load IA, that will give rise to the yes, copper loss. So that is high square IA. Okay. And yes, sir. Actual input. Vt into in IL. Yes, Vt into IL. Because in case of short machine, we know the load line current equals to the armature current plus field current for short machine. Okay, so this is the expression of efficiency for motor from Swinburne test.
is that clear so how you are testing the motor you are running the first you are running the motor in no load condition okay then you are measuring the constant losses that is c how you are measuring the constant losses you first multiplied the voltage into current at the no load condition that will give you p0 and you are subtracting i0 square ra from this p0 and you are getting the constant losses c so that is one thing which you are measuring in the low load condition so this is the one thing number one and the second thing we are measuring from this low load condition is the another voltmeter reading into the field current so this ammeter reading so this ammeter reading and this voltmeter reading you are taking and you are finding out the shunt field loss so these two losses you are measuring in the no load condition okay now you are when you are running the machine at any load you are utilizing those losses losses 1 and 2 okay and just by your armature current and the terminal voltage line current you are measuring the efficiency is it clear now how do you find out the efficiency of a generator so this is the efficiency of a motor so how do you find out the efficiency of a generator remember in case of generator this expression will be different in case of generator the expression will be ia equals to il plus il because the current direction will be opposite so from the generator itself from the machine itself current will be outgoing field current direction will be same but the load current or line current direction will be different okay and for generator so what will be the input and what will be the output for generator output ta ki ekhane output is electrical right now here we are getting electrical form of output so if that is a output then what is the output in terms of voltage heating to i l okay so that is the at output is this vt into i l remember that was the input in case of motor now it becomes output for the generator so that is one difference okay clear now how would you find the efficiency for generator because now you have output so you can find out so 1 minus losses by input 1 minus losses by input now again we can write 1 minus losses by output plus losses so that means it gives 1 minus what are the losses c plus vtif these two term we have found out from the swinburn test at the no load condition okay and that plus i square r same as the motor here the output is vtil plus c plus vt if plus i square r clear so have you seen how we are finding out this efficiency
Any question regarding this? Hmm? Okay. Now, what is the problem in this test? Can you tell me? This test is very easy. The advantage is this test is very easy. We are performing the test at the no load condition only. At the no load condition, we are performing the test and from that we are finding out the C and VTIF, heat loss and the constant loss. And from that we are predicting the efficiency at any load condition, any load condition IF. So it's very easy. And uh, as we are performing the test as the no load, so the power loss during the test would be quite less. The power loss for the test is quite less. Okay. Now, what's the problem for this test? So that is the advantage that I told you, but what is the problem with this test? Anybody? Okay. Now, when the machine actually will run at the no load, uh, loaded condition, there can be other losses, which generally we can't encounter in the no load case, such as the stray load loss. There is a lo loss called the stray load loss. Stray load loss means uh, due to this uh, current or flux linkage, there uh, can be uh, some sort of eddy current generated in uh, some other parts of the machine. Due to that, you can expect some stray load loss. Due to some harmonics also, some trail stray load loss can come. And this harmonic current will uh, more in amplitude for higher load current. At no load condition, that harmonic component will be quite less. So their uh, effect can be neglected. So that means those things we are not taking into account during the swing burn test at no load. Okay, so this type of trail load losses may come in the loaded condition that is not being accounted in swing burn test. So that is the disadvantage of swing burn test. Okay, is that clear? And uh, also there is a nonlinearity of the machine. Uh, we cannot, actually what we are doing here, we are extrapolating the efficiency part. But due to the nonlinearity of the machine, actual performance cannot be predicted for this type of machine. Okay. So these are few disadvantages of swing band test. So then uh, we generally prefer Hopkinson test for PC machines, which is the load test also. So that we'll discuss in the next class, the Hopkinson test. So if you have any question, you can ask me. Any question? No question.
সুইনবার্ন টেস্ট নিয়ে এত কিছু বললাম তা 